Yeah, Tommy Pham is very controversial. He's very intense. You know, he was with the Cardinals and had a couple of good years, and then he stopped hitting. And I think within the Cardinal clubhouse, they got tired of the stuff. There was always something going on with him, him against an opposing pitcher, him against the media, him against teammates, and he was gone. And he wound up going to Tampa, and he hit, and then they got rid of him, and he came here. And I, I had pretty good expectations because I thought this guy plays really hard. He's a little bit over the line in terms of intensity. Uh, he, he really works at it defensively. He can hit. He can spray the ball. He can hit home runs. It didn't work. He hit in the 220s his two years here, and they tried him all different spots. After a while, I just kind of got the sense this is a tired old act. And then bingo, he's out of here, and he's, he's moved to two other teams since. So he comes to Arizona. And with him, there's there's always stuff. And the stuff at Petco Park where he's insinuating the fans next to the Arizona dugout by the on-deck circle just harped and harped and harped and used racial slurs and all types of overtones that were linked to racism. And he'd talk back to him because that's who he is. He's right. Tommy Pham. Um, I'm surprised the Padres have indicated there was they found nothing had gone wrong there. But Pham... And Tori Lovello, the manager, were very outspoken uh, after the doubleheader on Saturday that why is all this junk happening? Why is this being allowed to happen at Petco Park? So we'll see if there's further investigation here. Why are people in San Diego angry at him? Well, I guess he's just kind of the guy that's the enemy on the other team, and he kind of stirs the drink and creates things. Maybe it's got something to do with the fact, you know, he got stabbed at a strip bar after his first mm -hmm. year here in the offseason. And maybe some people just carry the grudge that, you know, this guy is out of control and this guy's always involved in junk and he got knifed and could have died, et cetera, et cetera. And he's always problems in the clubhouse. So it was it was really a nasty weekend. And then to top it all off, dude hits two run home run and <laughs> yeah, he killed us. Killed us. That's right. So yeah. you tell me your thoughts on Tommy Pham, what you expected, what you saw. And then you're sitting there along the first baseline looking into the Arizona dugout and seeing all that junk with me in the on-deck circle. Well, well, first of all, um, and what the fans are doing, calling him out with racial epithets, I mean, that's that's uncalled for. I mean, come on. You know, this is 2023. We need to evolve here. Um, I've always had this sort of love-hate relationship with Tommy Pham. You know, when he first came here, I liked his hard-nosed attitude, tough guy. He's got a tattoo on his shoulder or on his arm. It says, believe in yourself. And that's, I'm all for that. And I like that intensity. But, you know, yeah, he came here. He got in a, in a, a stabbing, I mean, a, a serious injury. Um, and I think people kind of made him the bad guy. When the people that are casting these aversions on him, what do they do in their personal life? They've got skeletons in their closet and going to a strip club isn't like, you know, he, he was a victim of a stabbing. I mean, we should have sympathy for the guy. But uh, but yeah, he doesn't take any crap, you know. But I think as a Padre fan, we're still a little bit bitter. Because remember that time he collided with Hassan Kim and oh, Shadow yeah. left? And then he was pissed off at Hassan Kim. And, you know, that's everyone's fan favorite guy. But I saw there was even a play that happened. I think it was on, was it the Saturday morning game where there was a ball hit to deep left center and the center fielder had it tracked, but Tommy Pham, you know, he's, I'm going to get that ball. Uh, yeah. And they crisscross almost collided and, and the ball fell. And I was thinking to myself, that's Tommy Pham. He doesn't want to take crap from anybody. This is my ball. When really that's the center fielder's ball. He always seemed to be in grudge mode. Oh, and yeah. Just, <laughs> and you know, I've been in that clubhouse and it, it's grudge mode. After a while, I said, I don't need to spend any time talking to somebody that's in grudge mode all the time about anything and everything. So, but do you, you know his background, right? Like, grew up in Vegas. Yeah. And then he had a really dysfunctional family situation. And then um, some other families kind of took him in under their wing. And that's how he got involved in travel ball. And they kind of helped pay his way because he didn't, he wasn't of means. And then he just developed in baseball. So kind of a tough guy from a tough situation. Self-made guy. Self-made guy. And yeah, he's rough around the edges, but <laughs> it, he's one of those guys, if he's on your team, you like him. And he was a disappointment though for the Padres because oh. he had that hamate bone and he was hitting poorly. But this is who he is. This is who we thought we were going to get. Well, he's not here and... Now there's another reason to boo Arizona. Hey, our Monday bonus.